Hello everyone, uh, my name is Mohamed Hassani from Max Planck Institute of, for IRO Research. Today I will talk about um, our recently developed interface to precise in uh, Pyro workflows. First, uh, I will give an overview of what Pyro is. Uh, Pyro is an integrated development environment for material science which aim to ease development of complex workflows for material science. This includes uh, initial setup of, of uh, any simulation or analysis and analysis of the intermediate steps and debugging, and then remote and interactive submission to uh, an H HPC cluster. And then after the, 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 uh, the, the simulation or the analysis um, is done, then you can post-process and manage uh, manage the data or uh, mine the data and visualize it at the end. Uh, additionally, Pyron um, provides a high-level unified language for multiple simulation tools. So basically with one common language, you can create um, jobs, this uh, different simulation, simulation or analysis. Uh, basically, you you write uh, a similar um, uh, kind of uh, uh, code snippets, and uh, it can run uh, underneath a, a, a molecule dynamic simulation or a DF DFT calculation of um, a VASP. There are several components uh, to uh, in Pyron which enables it to provide such a features that I, we, I described in the previous uh, slide. Uh, one of the features is the, the Pyron job objects. It encapsulates the, uh, the, uh, the code um, uh, or, or simulation tool. And then, uh, why, uh, then um, the user can, um, can interact only with this uh, job object and give a, a generic input in, and then uh, this is the Pyron object translate the generic input to uh, the code specific um, input, and then uh, get the generic output to the user um, uh, in the return. Of course, there is a, a refactoring of this, uh, um, uh, the R simulation tool in, in this Pyron object. And then at the end of the simulation, uh, the metadata is, the, is stored in, the, in a central SQL database and the data itself is stored in the job HDF5 file. Uh, additionally, Pyron uh, job objects uh, provide upscaling in the HPC um, uh, clusters. And um, uh, on the top of uh, the Pyron uh, job object, uh, Pyron has a Pyron project feed in, in which uh, which includes and includes um, the, the several of these uh, Pyron jobs and then uh, manages uh, the, 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 all these jobs inside a project. Uh, then um, once, once uh, the user uh, import this uh, Pyron project and then it, uh, everything is done via uh, auto completion and um, it is done. Basically, you do not need to import any other thing as I will show you uh, later. You import Pyron project and then everything is done via auto completion. Um, then um, one thing else is that uh, Pyron uses um, the full integration of a Jupyter interface, which is the, uh, the, the interaction of users to Pyron via a web interface. Here you can see a, a, an automation of a simulation cycle via Pyron. A user uh, um, in, at first uh, defines the, uh, the model and the project, then it passes the, the generic input. What happens inside here is what uh, is done via Pyron. Pyron translate this uh, generic input to the code input and the simulation is run, the code output, then Pyron, it translates this to generic output. And then there are job validation, collection of the data and al analyzing this. Then at the end, uh, the visual, uh, the, the Pyron ob uh, object uh, returns the visualized uh, data and the user can validate such data. 
And as you can see, this, um, this uh, automation is done via the pirate objects and the collection of the data, metadata in the SQL and the, um, uh, the HD file file uh, takes place in underneath. Uh, there are several design principles behind Pyron. Um, first of all, is ease of use. As I mentioned, we, we, we aim to ease the uh, the development of um, uh, development of a, a complex workflow for the users. We provide a common language for uh, various um, analysis and simulation tools, and uh, provide this possibility to combine uh, the. Um, um, different simulation inside one project. Uh, we, uh, at least on, on the atomistic scale, we provide um, interoperability. Basically, one uh, user can um, can uh, can use multiple simulation tools to do the same thing. And uh, for the shareability, uh, Pyron um, can ship. Uh, and export all your project at the final status and you can share it with some others uh, and um, part of, in addition um, when you are using Jupyter interface uh, you have a mind binder to share your, uh, your your workflow with some other people and uh, since uh, Pyron is um, uh, developed in an object-oriented structure, uh, you can uh, simply um, extend it to uh, incorporate and integrate new tools into Pyron with new functionalities. And uh, Pyron at the end scale, uh, scales this uh, simulation uh, via MPI parallelization and configure uh, and has pre-configuration for a different queuing system. And um, finally, uh, for reproducibility, Pyron used Conda environment and uh, Docker images to ensure the reproducibility of your workflow. Um, for different sorts of uh, tasks, uh, Pyron has um, multiple modules. Uh, first of all is uh, Pyron base, which has the core uh, of workflow management and the core uh, components of Pyron uh, included. Um, and then we have the Pyron Atomistics, which has the wrapper for uh, multiple atomistic um, jobs, for example, LAMPS, Sphinx, GPAL, VASP, and others. Um, and then we have Pyron Continuum, which is uh, most important for this, uh, for this presentation. Uh, we have Pyron Continuum, um, which uh, currently only has uh, a Damask, which is a, 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 a Elastoplastic uh, analysis tool in uh, developing a Max Planck Institute. And we have Phoenix as a finite element solver of the uh, partial differential equation. And then we have Pyron Experimental for um, post processing uh, experimental data. All of these, um, all of these uh, modules are also. Um, uh, um, are available uh, in form of Docker images and one can um, access them. Now let's see how Pyron can use Precise to manage uh, coupling of different um, uh, continuous scale simulation or uh, as what, I, what we call it in Pyron, Pyron jobs. Um, when we have uh, uh, non-coupled simulations, we have um, Pyron job one, two, three, uh, to, till n, uh, accepting some input and providing the output, which is stored in the HDF5 file files of each of these jobs. But when we want to couple some of them, you, um, what we have um, done is that you can uh, pass an, uh, an adapter configuration to these Pyron jobs. For example, you can define a, uh, an adapter configuration for uh, job one and adapter configuration job two, and then pass these two job objects to a, another job, which is called precise. We have a precise job, and then this precise job at the end uh, run uh, these uh, jobs in parallel, and by running them, the, the output of these uh, these jobs are stored in the in the HD5 file, and then the, the metadata is also uh, stored in the uh, in our SQL database. By this point, let's go to our um, interactive session. 
you can use the, the these uh, links to 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 get to a, a web interface uh, and a Jupyter environment to run our uh, our first Phoenix precise example. Now uh, we are in the uh, in a uh, I copied the link that was in the presentation into my browser, and um, it uh, provides me a, a Jupyter inf interface on the cloud, and you can uh, basically run uh, our given um, precise example, and which runs uh, two uh, coupled uh, Phoenix example underneath. Uh, the, exam the example is from the uh, precise tutorials uh, where we have a Drischle uh, partition and a Neumann partition that which uh, in all of, in both of them we solves heat um, heat transfer equation, uh, but uh, in the middle we have a coupled uh, uh, boundaries where uh, in one of them the flux is transferred and in the other. Uh, the, the value of the temperature is given uh, for the uh, Dirichlet boundary. As I mentioned, uh, for Pyron, you need to only import project and everything else is uh, done um, um, via auto completion. So first of all, I, I create a project object. I remove all the, uh, the job if you uh, normally you do, um, you do it several times, um, um, it does not uh, run the, the, the already done calculation, so re you remove the extra job. Um, first, we, uh, we need to create a job. As um, I, I mentioned, I want to try this uh, auto completion. Um, it's just you, you just need to you, uh, you want to create a job, you go to pre r create job, then you have the Phoenix Thomas or Phoenix linear elasticity. We want the Phoenix job. You pass in the name. One of the good features of Pyron is that you uh, you you have a, um, a by pressing Shift and Tab you get the the doc string of the uh, the code itself. You need the job name only. If you you can say you need the job name, and I put it Phoenix Drishle. As the name, and then I created this jo job. We don't need this again uh, for passing uh, the um, what uh, the input it needs. This job is the, the domain and the mesh. We just uh, we want to pass in the domain, the element order. We have some default value for the element order and the element type. Uh, then we go and we want to create a domain. Um, I want to show you how uh, this auto completion works. We have the job D for the Drischle domain, and then we want to create the mesh. Uh, we use the regular rectangle uh, mesh, uh, which is uh, provided by Phoenix example. We have refactored this into our code. Uh, if you uh, just, you can simply, use similar syntaxes as um, uh, Phoenix. We have the two points and then the number of X discretization and NY discretization and diagonal left. And then simply the, the job, uh, the mesh is created. Then you can access the, the mesh, um, uh, the mesh object. Simply you can, um, you can define the subdomain one of the good features of um, having this Jupyter interface is that we, we have the, the, the Docker string, as I mentioned here, and the auto completion uh, very nicely integrated here. Then uh, we created the subdomain and then we passed, uh, we created the, the, the boundary condition of type Drischle for this uh, given subdomain. And then we passed this, um, the, the analytical expression for uh, this subdomain. This provides us the this non-coupled uh, boundaries at the the border of this um, these uh, um, uh, these rectangles of this each of the subdomain. 
then uh, we um, we defined the uh, non uh, coupled uh, boundary, and then uh, we give this. Uh, we see that we have a dictionary of the subdomain with the given names. Then we define the 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 uh, the PDE the the, the you see that the, the, we have a dictionary of the, the inputs, the, the, the initial value for uh, DT, which then will be uh, modified by the precise um, advancement of the. Now we want to define the initial condition. Let's see how the auto completion can help us to define the. Uh, job uh, we use the the sub uh, the solver attribute of the the job and then use the auto completion we we want to set the the initial condition and see the the um, this is the way that you want to uh, to define it uh, basically we want to interpolate some uh, some expression some analytical expression um i will copy this from the line below and then I run it. This it's not necessary. Then we uh, this UN which is uh, represent as displayed here represent our uh, the the initial value and the initial condition where we name it to temperature and then we want to uh, to uh, define the source term based on the uh, based on the analytical expression, uh, the, we see the type of this is uh, some uh, function space, uh, some coefficient uh, from Phoenix over. Then we, we want to define the equation. We use um, we we uh, we have a parser for uh, the the normal nomenclature of the uh, the the Phoenix. Um, uh, so uh, equations, and then we we get we receive some uh, some string for the equation, and then interpret it underneath in our um, preside uh, uh, under in our Phoenix job. And now we want to define the uh, define the uh, the adapter configuration. I have a typo here as well. Um, let me fix this. The interesting thing about um, Jupyter Notebooks and the, the Pyro workflows is that you can document your workflows and then share it uh, as you saw in, um, in, uh, in our ex um, this repository. You, if I go to uh, the repository that hosts this, uh, this workshop material is that um, you can um, share the my binder link and you I mean basically alongside your workflow you you can share the my binder link and then someone can repeat uh, your uh, your workflow alongside your publication um, so um, let's back go back to the our workflow this was a short parenthesis open i want to see how one can can i define the uh, the adapter configuration this as i mentioned i want to any first initialize that adapt, uh, adapter configuration let's see what it um it tells us um uh, I will not go through the details. Basically, you, you need to initialize this um, uh, this adapter uh, and giving the uh, the configuration JSON file and then uh, the coupling subdomain name and then the, some write object and then uh, by default it gets the uh, the fu read function space um, um, from the, uh, the from the write object. So let's um, to initialize our adapter configuration, and then um, by from the adapter configuration we have some predefined coupling, and here we we are using um, Drischle. Uh, from the Drischle, um, we need to uh, calculate the flux in the direction x and pass it to uh, pass it to the uh, to the Neumann uh, part. So 
uh, maybe the the, uh, the naming of the coupling type should uh, be changed in the future. But um, uh, what I mean is here is that the, 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 from the Dirichlet uh, domain subdomain, you 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 uh, pass it to the Phoenix uh, from the, to the Neumann partition. So we we define the predefined uh, coupling uh, scheme. Uh, similarly, for the Neumann partition, we do the same thing. We define the the job, the the sub domain uh, and subdomain mesh, the the, the time um, step, uh, the initial condition, and everything. The the equation, the the source term, everything. Um, then we uh, define the adapter configuration, similar to the, this case. And now here, we we want to pass the temperature from the Neumann uh, uh, Neumann uh, partition to the to the uh, to the other uh, part. Now we we want uh, to pass these two files to two jobs to the uh, to our precise job. So first we we create a um, similar to the Phoenix job that uh, we have this job uh, P stands for precise and then we PR create and then um, we go for the job and then we want to create a job we we, we look for the this uh, sort of job that we have we want the precise and we give the name um, as the job name here is the um i will use this i use the name precise parent job basically okay we create this uh, job and we append uh, the the child list. I mean, the child list represent the the jobs which um, this uh, precise job should run in parallel. And then by running the uh, the precise job, you can simply see that the uh, precise run and finish um, successfully the uh, the this. Uh, these two jobs. Then you can see that uh, Pyron stored the metadata of the jobs um, inside the um, what sort of the, what sort of um, jobs they are, what sort of uh, where they are uh, stored, and uh, things like that. Now um, um, I will want to show you how you can visualize the. The result of this uh, calculation, we use the uh, PyVista um, uh, PyVista package to uh, visualize this uh, these results. First, I read the uh, the the last um, results of the the uh, the job um, the Drischler the subdomain and Neumann subdomain. Uh, you can see the, the the content of this mesh object that we have. Then you can plot the temperature for the uh, from the uh, for the. These these are some interactive. Um, they are not. I mean, uh, there are some. And then you can um, plot the uh, the temperature for the. Um, uh, for the uh, for the Neumann partition, then you can combine the two uh, meshes and then uh, plot the temperature for the. Uh, normally, they these are uh, some interactive, uh, but I think in the my binder there are some uh, package missing as is shown here. Uh, I have to fix this later on. So th these are normally interactive, and you can. Um, uh, you can interactively listen. Uh, an additional feature is that you can draw a line from here to here and see that the the the, uh, the diffusion of the uh, the uh, the, uh, the heat conduction in the in the in this uh, sample uh, by drawing the line and then plotting uh, the. Oh, I forgot to uh, to execute this part and then you see that the the, the, the temperature profile on the um, on this line is plotted nice so let's go back to our uh, presentation um, 
now I want to to talk to you. Let me. I have to solve that presentation. Okay. Um, as I showed uh, that uh, Pyron had um, different modules, you can use Conda um, installer to and um, you on the Conda Force channel you can you diff install different uh, modules from Pyron. Additionally, uh, uh, by by help of our, my uh, colleague uh, Jan Janssen, uh, Precise uh, and uh, Phoenix adapter for Precise is also uh, now available on Conda 4 channel uh, from Anaconda Cloud. You can also run uh, Pyron Docker images um, on and um, use the, uh, this Pyron module. Uh, for the documentation, you can use our uh, the tutorials given on our website. Um, you can see, um, uh, you can access the source code, for example, for the continuum uh, module from GitHub. And then we have uh, several num number of uh, video tutorials um, on uh, Pyron channel on YouTube. Um, we have workflow templates both uh, on Pyron and Material Digital is the platform that um, uh, use Pyron uh, as the workflow manager um, and workflow platform. Uh, so you can also uh, access the Pyron workflow templates from these two repository and then um, simply fork them and use it uh, to your uh, desire. At the end, I would like to thank um, um, Pyron Core Team and the Steering Committee, um, my colleagues in MPIE, the, the funding project, the Material Digital, which is a, a large platform for, um, for um, connecting the industry, material industry and uh, academia um, and NFTI network as well, uh, these two platform uh, for support um, uh, as funding projects for Pyron. We have uh, collaborators uh, in different um, academic institutes. Um, I would like to thank all of uh, you as well for listening uh, to uh, this presentation. And I look forward to your questions and comments.